Van David. All right, take two. <laughs> this time with sound. Arizona, 1864 uh, ban on abortion, which is currently about to be implemented in Arizona. There was a two-week stay after the Supreme Court ruled on that, the Arizona Supreme Court, that is. Um, a vote happened yesterday, and there were not enough Republicans willing to repeal that law and reinstitute the 15-week ban that's currently there uh, to um, uh, overturn that old law. So basically, that old law, you know, this written by the same guy who wanted to, uh, who basically lowered the age of consent for marriage to 10 years old. I mean, I don't know how far back we have to go in history when we thought having a girl who was 10 years old be suitable for, for marriage slash, you know, making babies. Jeez. And it's the Democrats that are the party of child sex trafficking and stuff, right? That's, do I, do, did I get that one wrong? Oh, God. Um, now, the, the Democrats basically, they're, they're being handed a gift here. They can campaign on this big time. Uh, and point out that it's the Republicans that are doing this, not the Democrats. The Democrats are voting to overturn this. The Republicans that want this. And, you know, you're taking away women's rights. You're taking away their, uh, not, you're not taking away their cat, unfortunately, but you're taking away their rights. You're taking away their right to make their own decisions on their body autonomy. Uh, <laughs> and you know, I don't know why you'd want to piss off that demographic. <laughs> You know, even women that vote Republicans are going to overrule their votes for Republicans when it's Republicans taking away their rights. You know, we don't we don't need to support them. Um, so I'm going to read on will the Democrats uh, and the Republicans in Arizona be able to overturn this law before it gets enacted? Entertainment purposes only. I've decatted my, my reading table, and we'll go with it from here. I think you finally got the hint. Um, so what we have under here is the Four of Cups. They can't come to an agreement. It, it just, you know, there are too many Republicans who are just locked in. They will not compromise on this. Um, now, this reminds me of something Bo the Fifth Column mentioned uh, the other day. Um he was looking at abortion statistics and he was saying, you know, if you know the numbers, you know the numbers. And for folks that are um, anti-abortion, I'm not going to call them pro-life, they're anti-abortion, anti-women's health rights, they know the numbers. The rest of us don't know them very well, but they know the numbers. And they know that if there's a 15-week abortion ban, well, there's a 15-week abortion ban over there, but um, there's statistics on the number of abortions at 13 weeks. And that's what Bo was quoting. And he was saying something to the tune that if you had an abortion ban after 13 weeks, so from week 14 on, you can't have an abortion, how many abortions would that have stopped? And the answer was about 6%, which is telling you that about 95% or so of the abortions, 19 out of 20, happened before week like 12 or 13. They're happening earlier than that. Um, so, you know, this 15-week abortion ban is pretty much not really an abortion ban because it's really not stopping anything. And the, um, the anti-abortion people know that. That's why they want a total ban on abortion because that's the only way you can really ban abortion. Even the, like the six-week one still allows like 70% of the abortions to occur. It's something, it's something like that. Uh, that number I'm not as confident on, um, but the other one I'm pretty confident on. So there's, there's really no abortion ban. It's either ban abortion altogether or don't because there's really no middle ground here. And so the anti-abortion people, they don't want to get rid of this 1864 law because it gives them everything they want. Anything else is a compromise that doesn't, serve their purpose. And since they want to kid themselves and say that they're doing God's will, they don't want to compromise on God's will because how do you compromise on the man who's always right? Notice I say man and not woman because I'm taking it from their perspective. 
So then they tell the Republicans uh, in the House that they need to support this or else they're not going to get their vote. So now these guys who are more concerned about me, re, uh, retaining their job than doing their job do nothing. They sit there and pout and say, nope, can't do it. Cross with the King of Pentacles. These are the evangelicals. Um uh, basically saying that, uh, no, we've got the money. We provide the things of value. You cannot, you're not here without our presence. And if you want that money, then you better do what we tell you to. And if you don't do what we tell you to, this big cash is going to turn into little cash. We're, as a matter of fact, not only that, we're going to give you none. We're going to give all the cash to the person who's going to primary your butt. And then you're out of a job altogether there's not looking like there's going to be a lot of compromise here between uh the democrats and the republicans in the past the queen of pentacles pregnant woman or a mother with a baby grandmother with a grandbaby but no women's health women's rights the things of value to women for it's like the pro for the anti-abortion people the only thing women are good for is creating babies that's their only value and they're treating women just like that. They're breeding stock. If you don't have some dangly bits between your legs, somehow you're not valuable. You know, here, let me drag my knuckles on my mat, my mat a little bit so I can really get into the energy of the Neanderthals that call themselves evangelicals and GOP members these days. Current situation is the Five of Cups. Um... The, the there's disappointment. Um, <clears throat> the Democrats are disappointed that Republicans are not supporting women. Women are are disappointed in the Republicans and evangelicals because this just isn't plain isn't right. I think even Republicans don't like this, but they're kind of like, well, what can I do if I don't do this? Then I don't get the money, and I'm going to be primary, and it's all about me and my power. <sighs> you know. Doing the right thing really isn't that hard a thing to do. <laughs> I assure you, you may not, you may think that you can't get reelected without evangelical money and support. I guarantee you, you're not going to get reelected without women's votes. That ain't going to happen. Uh-uh. And there you go. Overarching energy. Women have the power in this one. They're having their rights taken away. They're being devalued. So they are the ones that need to step up and um, show their value. So in some ways, now we talk about this age of Aquarius coming in and, you know, women taking Trump down and, you know, it's the end of the patriarchy. All of that is true. All these crappy things that are happening, it's to get women so pissed off that, <laughs> that they put down the bird, they take off their the little day coat that they're wearing there, they look the guys, their husbands, their, law their lawmakers, the evangelicals, look them right in the eye, bring it close here, and say, fine. <laughs> now, if you're a viewer here, and I'm going to assume that you're a male viewer, if you do not know what the word fine means in that tone, you're in trouble. <laughs> For the rest of us and all the ladies here, we know exactly what the word fine means. It. For those of you who don't know, I'll give you the, the real short answer. It means you effed around and now you're about to find out. <laughs> oh, the lesson to be learned. Women are more than just arm candy for men to spit out a couple of kids and, you know, white picket fence and stuff like that. No, there's more to them than this. And they're about to show you what's at the end of the rainbow. You might think it's a pot of gold. <laughs> it might just be a drop kick. Outcome is the Ten of Swords. Um... The, the the Democrats, you know, the the Republicans, they, they to them, they've got what they want. They've got this ban. It's going to keep families together. And they're not going to want to put an end to it. They, they need to put an end to it. I don't think they're going to do it. Uh, because um, they want the money. So what's going to happen to them? It's going to put an end to them. They have a choice. End this stupid law or... 
Um, or if you don't, it's going to be the end of your career. And actually, frankly, it's going to be both. All right. I'm going to leave this here right now because <laughs> I have a cat. <laughs> and this cat keeps wanting attention. Here, I'll give you your cat fixes, everyone. This cat keeps wanting attention. And he's not letting me get my readings done. Anyways, it's okay to have a short reading on occasion, huh? I'm adorable. Here, show me your fangs. Uh, he's been this way. He's been this way since 7 in the morning. He's woken me up and he's just been wanting attention. You pet him and then he bites you. <laughs> dogs. Dogs. You pet dogs, they wag their tail. And then they lean into you more. Anyways, thank you very much for watching this video and supporting my channel. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Here. <laughs> thank you very much for your kind words. Uh, your comments. Everything you do to feed the YouTube algorithm so that my video makes it out to a wider audience, including cat lovers everywhere. To those tuning into this channel recently and for the first time, we don't always have cats on the reading table, but when we do, they're black cats named Nico. Huh. And they're pests. Oh, the belly. Anyways, thank you very much for watching this video and supporting my channel. I'll catch you on the next video. Take care.